Hola familia, my name is Maria Covarrubias with Cien Chiles and today I'm going to teach you how to make authentic roasted salsa. So you know when you go to a restaurant and you can't stop eating the chips with salsa? So now you're going to have to make it at home and challenge yourself to make something from very simple ingredients into something so delicious. So let's start by having our pan ready. I have a cast iron griddle. Uh, ready to go here so i have it on medium heat i'm gonna just literally place my veggies right on top of and they start dancing like that because they're mexican like me Ay! perfecto i like it when my veggies dance so i have some garlic here i'm gonna literally have the garlic with skin on for the onion i start with the head cut straight into it and that way you'll have a flat surface to work with. So for this one, I have four tomatoes, so half of onion will do. Ratio is everything. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it certainly does kind of like everybody has a, a part in the party, right? We'll peel back the papery layers. And again, I invite you to compost at home. You have no idea how much of food waste goes into the landfill. Once I cut, I peel the back the papery layer. We can keep the, the tail for now so it keeps it whole and it's easier to flip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my onion on thirds and try to keep some of that tail on it so we can roast it. The secret with about roasting this type of salsa is that it honestly, like, you'll roast until it's black. So the sugars in the onion will develop, the skin of the tomato is gonna burn. So this is a type of salsa that you kinda need to be patient with it. So we'll bring our onions over here and our cast iron is almost like medium heat. We're already getting some color in the smaller stuff. So that's perfect. So you see, you hear the pop, there's a crunch. Look at our tomatoes. So the tomatoes obviously have the most water content. So these ones are the ones who will be probably turning a little more so they cook even. We have our onions already bringing in some color. Of course, use tongs if you don't feel safe uh, doing what I do, uh, which is totally fine. So grab it from the tail and you see it's already starting to get some color. It's kind of soft in that side. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. I always like to toast more serranos than I would probably use. You notice how I didn't even use any cooking oil. So this literally goes straight in the dry pan because this is what we want to get. So the very like slow roasted, beautiful salsa that we all enjoy in restaurants. So not only do I have like a dry surface or like a dry hot surface, like my comal or griddle, whatever you, you call it, it is so important to have. Like I use this to make tortillas. I even bake bread on this. I literally pop it in the oven and use it as a stone. This is like heavy cast iron comal. Our tomatoes are getting nice and toasty. The skillet is peeling off a little bit, so that makes it harder for me to turn them around. You don't want to lose those burnt little bits of skin. So just gently toss them around. That'll continue to cook them evenly. There we go. Perfect. And then for our chiles, they're almost ready. Got them pretty toasty, maybe not on all of the sides, but you can see the juices are already coming out. So that's just like the water that's in the chile. So this is what we're going for. Roasted salsa needs to really go a little bit beyond. So our garlic is also very close. That's why I like to keep like two sides of my roasting process going. That way I can like not mess up half of the thing. So. I'm almost ready to pull my garlic out. The onion still needs a little bit more cooking to do. You could also do roasted salsa in your oven if you don't have the time to do it. I would just recommend to cut the tomatoes in like quarters and expose the skin to your broiler or to um, the closest heat on your oven. That way you get perfectly roasted salsa. I'm gonna set my chiles aside because these are ready. So I'll just literally put them in a bowl and put them on the side there because I know the garlic will soon to be roasted as well. And we'll just keep going at it. All right, familia, the tomatoes look like they're done. So let's grab a little bowl and use your tongues. You see, oh, that's perfectly juicy, awesome. So we want to pick up that 
scraping and put it in our bowl because that all is going to go in our molcajete. Ooh, perfecto. You see, that's exactly what I'm going for. We'll grab our onion and bring it over to your counter. So what we're going to do now is bring our molcajete over. I season my molcajete. Some other time I'll show you how to season the molcajete. But essentially it's just grinding rice and salt until there's no more volcanic sand in your molcajete. So don't grab it in the store and immediately use it. You, there's like a process. So to start, we're gonna add the garlic. I'm gonna use one serrano, good amount of salt, and this will help me grind. Oh my gosh, it already smells like it's gonna be a spicy salsa. So next, we'll grab our onion and we'll grind that with the serranos. I'm having a hard time breaking down the onion, so don't hesitate to grab a cutting board and uh, grab some of the onion pieces and just like chop them down. Again, it doesn't have to be beautiful and perfect. So I literally just rough chopped and I'll put it back in there. And as you're like bringing all the salsa together, you will be kind of like continue to mash the whole thing together. So, oh, look at that. Tomatoes are perfectly soft. Look at these little pieces of skin. This is what I scraped down out of my comal. So literally like carbon, it can like break it apart. So that's kind of like the flavor profile that we wanna go for. Mm. Oh my gosh, so good. I think we're looking good friends. I think we're looking like a great roasted salsa from your local Mexican restaurant. Let's give it a little try. Mmm, that's perfect. The amount of salt that we threw in there, the sweetness of the, I literally just got a perfect piece of onion. So you can make this in advance without any trouble. I just suggest you refrigerate it. The more kind of like it hangs out, the flavors develop a lot more. So this is how you make authentic roasted salsa at home. This is Maria with Cien Chiles. I hope you enjoy this one. Besos, bye. Hola familia, this is Maria with Cien Chiles. This is my line of authentic Mexican hot sauces. I'll give you a walkthrough of all my four sauces. The mustard is essentially like a pickled mustard seed. Honestly, it's life-changing. When I tried pickled mustard seed for the first time, I was mind blown. So make sure you give it a try. We call it the crown jewel for a reason. It's almost like vegan caviar. So awesome on deviled eggs, oysters, lobster rolls. Habanero is kind of like my home salsa. This is one that I 
definitely brought down a ton of the heat. So this one's the mildest one I make. Uh, it's very tomato forward, a great little kick towards the back. So I love it with eggs in the morning. Jalapeño is definitely a family favorite. It, this one's made with tomatillos, onion, garlic, lime juice. So the fresh, like citrusy notes really pop out. Um, I love this on a tri-tip sandwich, on carnitas tacos. And then last but not least, Thai bird is the spiciest one I make. This one's made with Thai pepper, so don't get fooled. Nothing to do with Thai cuisine. This is just the type of pepper. So it's that kind of heat that lingers towards the back. I love this one for roasted veggies, hot wings, you name it. You can get these at a store near you or at cienchiles.com. Always so flavorful, always there to compliment, never to overpower your food. Thank you for supporting small businesses. We appreciate you. Besos, bye.